It's a pleasure to come your way once more, and it's a privilege, really, to be in the uh, home of the man we're about to discourse with. He is going to be sharing his thoughts on uh, former President Rawlings of blessed memory, but we're also going to be talking about state affairs. Now, the person we're going to be interacting with, I am going to be interacting with, is a statesman in his own right. He is the longest-serving uh, foreign minister of our country from 1982 to 1997, the longest serving attorney general as well. And he was chairman of the NDC between 2002 and 2005 leading into 2006. I'm talking about none other than Dr. Obed Asamoa. He really needs no introduction. Doc, thank you so much for welcoming us into your home. You're welcome. Now, <clears throat> Especially on the back of what has happened, uh, you know, the demise of statesman former President Rawlings, it's only fitting that we come and sit at the feet of oracles uh, like you to discourse on his life. But before we even get into that, you have a long history of lecturing. And interestingly, you have lectured former presidents like uh, John Evans at a Mills, may his soul rest in peace. You have also lectured uh, the likes of Chachuchikata, uh, now Professor. Uh, and when you were lecturer at the University of Ghana in the early days, uh, Nanado Dankwa Ekofuado, our current president, also was a student at the time. Uh, yeah, but you know, I, 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 you know, when I came back from Britain in 1960, right. as a young lawyer, right. I did my pupillage with Nana Ekofuado's father. That is Edward Ekofuado? Yes. Right. That's, what, that's how I got to know him. So I knew him even before he came to the university. Right. <laughs> did, did they turn out, looking at them today, the Chachus and the uh, Professor Boches, did they turn out as students of yours the way you thought they would? Oh, yes. I think uh, they've, they've all performed well and uh, uh, you know, have shown uh, scholarship and uh, integrity. And I think uh, uh, they, they've come out the way I had expected them to. Right. Mm. Now, looking at the current state of affairs in our country, we're battling COVID-19 and so many other ills, corruption here and there, and so many others. How would you describe the Ghana of today, uh, put side by side with the Ghana of before, when you were one of those at the helm of affairs? Well, <coughs> it's um, at our time, you know, because I served under <coughs> President Rawlings, I mean, you know, I believe that uh, the uh, political atmosphere was a little more <laughs> honest. <laughs> honest? Know? Yes. I mean, you know, you couldn't, you, you, you couldn't be corrupt under President Rawlings. I mean, you would be out of, <laughs> of office in, in no time. You hear your name on the radio uh, that you've been dismissed, mm -hmm. you know. So at that time, I think that the kind of things that are going on now which actually went on before, because after all, he came to correct some of the, uh, 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 of the mistakes of the political uh, 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 class. Uh, the, those things have returned again. I mean, you know, during the time of the Nkrumah, right. I mean, corruption was uh, <laughs> very colossal. Nkrumah also tried to, to correct it, I mean, you know, uh, but it was difficult for him to, to, to do so. We had the instances with Kroko and yes. many others. And so many, so many pounds exactly. You know, so, wife, yes, you know. Nkrumah tried, he tried, but it was very difficult. You know, when you have a situation of people who are of nourish, you know, people who've come to work for the first time, they tend to grab with uh, both hands and feet, you know. Right. And uh, Nkrumah tried, but it, it really didn't work too well. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we had <coughs> the interruption of the soldiers. Uh, you have the NLC coming in, and then uh, you know, then a, a champion coming in, and of course, then you started having the, co the corruption of the military as well. Right. You know, so President Rawlings came more or less to not only to let the civilians realize that there should be certain standards in politics, right. but also was the soldiers to realize that there should be some standards in politics. If you want to, if you want power. Right, but, but, but even under Rawlings, I mean, the quality grain incident, for example, happened. There were instances where people were blamed of corruption and all that. Are you suggesting that under the Rawlings uh, regime, I don't know whether pre-1992 uh, and the Constitution and the 1993, uh, you know, when the Fourth Republic took off or after uh, that portion, are, are you suggesting 
there were no activities, palpable activities of corruption, corrupt officials at the time? Well, there were some allegations about corruption, but it's not like you, 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 find, you can find now. I mean, you wouldn't have found a thing like Ajapa <laughs> and uh, JJ, mm -hmm. or you couldn't have uh, had a thing like uh, the Airbus business right. Right. under JJ. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen. But the quality greens case, the, there was there were some allegations that there was some corruption or something, but it wasn't really proved. In, but, but, uh, but people were jailed for that. People were jailed for, yeah. for, for the quality grain saga. In fact, it, it turned out to be a, a charade of uh, very great proportions, nationally speaking. What was promised was not delivered. Gargantuan sums of money were pumped in there to this uh, foreign person, this lady who came into the system. And people, people actually were, were held culpable for that. Yes, but I believe that uh, with regard to the political class, it was mainly issues of uh, error of judgment. Right. You know, I mean, if, for example, that woman that came in, and uh, then the, the whole state was de dealing with her and everything was, but you know, it was, it, was, it was wrong, you know. But I think that people had good intentions, but I think they used the wrong uh, actors to achieve those, those ends. There was a saying that uh, the road to hell is paved with many good intentions That's and sometimes uh, the people who serve under a president end up you know, affecting him or her in yes. the decisions they yeah. make. But especially because you bring in a Japa, and we were going to talk about it, but since you've started <coughs> off on that tangent, let's do, and maybe Airbus as well. A lot of CSOs have said that this entire arrangement when it comes to a Japa might be an a Japone uh, system because <laughs> uh, there are so many flaws, apparent uh, flaws. In recent times, we've had the special prosecutor, Martin Amidu, also come out to say in his risk assessment that there was <coughs> bid rigging with regard to Imran and data banks involvement and a whole hodgepodge of uh, matters that do not smack of the right processes being followed. Yes. What is your take on the Ijapa deal? And even as you deliberate, do you think we should be sending it back to Parliament, or should we do what uh, the NDC and the CSOs are saying? Abrogate it, throw it out. It should be abrogated and thrown out. I mean, really, <laughs> this is one of the most uh, uh, obscene uh, acts, uh, you know. I mean, the, the process, the, the, the uh, people who were put on the board, the uh, incentives that were given to people uh, for the roles that they played, and then the whole idea, the economic aspect of it. I mean, after all, you were going to get about $120 million yearly from your uh, minerals. Mm -hmm. Now, you've just somehow <coughs> put all that together and, you know, put it out somewhere for so many years. You know, you would have been better off taking the $120 million every year <laughs> for, 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 for many years instead of, t you know, coming out with a program whereby you would only be getting about $500 million. I mean, right. that, 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 I've listened to some of the analysis, and it says that within two years, if you look at the royalties we get in this country per year, yes. within two years, we should be getting around the $500 million that yes. year. Yes. We're, we're stating our royalties against. Yes. So, but, but you spoke about you know, those on the board and all of that. Let's talk about Osafu Mafa's son, for example. Is it not a matter of merit qualification? He is one of those, and it's been said. Uh, Gabi Asari Tridaku and others in the MPP have said that if he is qualified, let's let the person do it. What is the problem with that? Well, was there open competition? That is the issue. They suggest there was. Well, and I, that he I, qualified, having gone through the systems. Well, they will have to demonstrate to us because there are so many others who are qualified who never heard about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so I think that is where the problem is. Right. You know, but I think that that whole deal has to be thrown out. I mean, really, taking it back to Parliament is uh, a waste of everybody's time. The, the special prosecutor, <coughs> though he was not meant to do this, also added that he suspects, in fact, uh, to quote him, he surmises that government official one is John Gramani Mahama. I'm sure you followed the Airbus scandal and everything to do with it. How do you feel about that? Well. There isn't any specific 
a mention of him, of John Mahama. Although the, if you read the report and all that, it's kind of points at him. But you see, those who were held accountable in Britain were our admitted responsibility, but on condition of more or less anonymity. I mean, they, they didn't have to mention that A got this or B got that, you know. But in any case, that whole project was under the NDC government. And uh, somebody within the NDC government was responsible for getting that money. So, I mean, there's no way NDC can uh, escape responsibility. You know, for it. I mean, so but there's no extricating the NDC from the No, 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 no. I, I can't see how they can extricate themselves from that. One thorny matter that has come up, and I subscribe to it, I feel that if Mr. Special Prosecutor, and he's called Prosecutor for a reason, if he has enough grounds to believe that the former president is government official one, which would put him in a compromising uh, situation, then the time is now, even before the elections, to follow the legal processes. But he has also said that it's a national security uh, situation and he feels he should allow the elections to go on. But what if the, the people of Ghana elect John Romani Mahama to become president again? Is the special prosecutor now going to prosecute him, so to speak? Uh, what, yeah, what should well, be done before? Now I, I want to take well, a you know, legal you know, uh, mind on this one. Yeah, but see, that is the thing. I, I have not concluded positively that it is John uh, Mahama. But if he were? If he, if he were, the question is, would you have the evidence to be able to prosecute him right now? You can't. You can only get the evidence from the British uh, uh, fraud office. And they will not be able to, they won't tell you that, you see. So it's, very, it's going to be very difficult to prove your case. And that, 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 that I think, is the problem of Martin. I'm quite sure that if he, could, if he had the evidence to prove his case, he would, he, would, he would take action. So you feel he doesn't have the evidence? He doesn't. Get, to get the evidence, you have to get it from the British, and they won't give it to you. Right. Let's talk about <clears throat> this briefly before we get into Jerry John Rawlings, whom we are uh, memorializing. The NDC lost monumentally in 2016 by some 800,000 uh, votes. After that, there were moves to find out why the party lost and all of that. Do you feel the, the NDC, your party, and I know you at a, at a brief moment left the NDC, formed the DFP, came back to join the NDC. Do you feel the NDC has learned the lessons it needs to have learned as a party ahead of election 2020? I, there are a whole lot of things I have uh, problems with, with regard to the party. Like what? You see, for example, I, you know, and I, I told him so, I told Mr. John Mahama, for example, that I thought it would have been better for him to, to uh, let the NDC elect a, a different person. You see, because if you have to look at the pattern of voting in Ghana, mm. there is a tendency for the population to give each party at least two terms. Right. So JJ had two terms. Uh, Kufu had two terms. Uh, Mills and uh, John had two terms. So the likelihood, <laughs> the likelihood is that uh, President Kufuado will get two terms. Right. Now, if he's going to get two terms, then the next term for NDC would be 2024. Right. And if you have a different person now, that person will be marketed enough so that by 2024, he will be a household name. Right. Yeah. So I, that, for me, would have been the best way to approach it. So but if, if it would have been better for John Romani Mahama, from where you sit, from, not to have contended again? From my point of view, he should, have, he should not. Because assuming he goes and loses now, what's going to happen? In 2024, when we have a better chance, we are going to now market a new face. Right. But, but they have a certain uh, Nana Jino Pokwajiman as, as running mate. Don't you feel, even if they lost she, the current election... She's, she, a, she's a new face. She's a new face. She, she's but a but new she wouldn't face. be new after, after this you know, tenure. She wouldn't be new come 2024. Yeah, but then there are a lot of problems about that also. Because, <clears throat> you see, one of the arguments, for example, if you read Professor Ahoy's book, 
working what, with Rawlings. That's yes, what yes. Right. You know, you remember when the issue arose as to whether I should be the running mate to Professor Mills. The argument that they made to JJ was that when JJ was there, Professor Mills was his running mate. So it was a, a team of water region and uh, central, central region. region. Now, if Mills went and I also became the running mate to uh, Mills, it would be the same team, central region, uh, water region. Mm -hmm. But this is the, the, the issue. The point is that since then, Central Region has always been on the ticket. You see? So there was no basis for there that? There was no basis for that. You know, they, 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 they used that to, you know, uh, more or less disqualify me to being a running mate because they probably found that I would be an inconvenient person to work with. When you say they, whom are you referring to? I mean, the, if you read Professor Awe's book, he talks about he, Ohini Ajekum, and Tutubi are the ones who went to tell JJ you know, this story. So they were the ones who cooked it. Let's talk about JJ. And maybe you started off on the right tangent. Uh, Professor Hoy's book is a bit of a scathing review of working with Rawlings. I mean, so many things are said in there that are unpalatable as far as the former president uh, is concerned. Do you subscribe to what is written in that book? Well, I, I really think that uh, most of what he said was true from my own assessment. I think where I would have problems with the book is where the, the impression is given that more or less JJ was responsible for Professor Mills' uh, 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 demise because he kept criticizing him and uh, wouldn't let him, uh, you know, perform and that sort of thing. You know, but the point is this, that if you look at the facts c c uh, uh, closely, what JJ was doing was that he, he had got information from Mills that he was not well, he was in South Africa. And so he had wanted to step down. So JJ was working on that, that there should be a replacement. And the replacement he was thinking of really was Atu Ahoy. So it wasn't really moving out of the, <laughs> of the Ahoy family, wow. of that group. It wasn't moving out of that group. Mm. So it, it, it's a little, uh, I think, uh, unfair to create the impression that like JJ was being disloyal to Mills, whom he had promoted all along. Mm. I think that, that, was, that was unfair. And I think that's what I have my problems with, with that book. Right. Now, on the back of what you just mentioned, the Ahoys and what may have been said about you back then, and even with Rawlings himself, was there any bad blood between you, whether between you and Rawlings or between you and the Ahoys at any point in time? Not really. I mean, there were disagreements, of course. For example, the, the, the main issue <coughs> was the uh, suitability of Professor Mills as the presidential candidate of the party. Now, I had taught Professor Mills <coughs> as a very nice person, but he didn't have the, <laughs> the iron discipline right. to run a country. If you want to run a country, you've got to be you're able to take some very hard decisions. Mm -hmm. You remember the case of JJ, for example, where one, uh, I think, Lieutenant Lee or so, Yes, uh, yes. Killed somebody. Yes, and, and, and uh, he, he was supposed to go through the processes, but because he was a relation to uh, him, all the things that happened. Yes, but in the end, I mean, JJ uh, uh, approved his uh, execution. But, but that was actually because it was brought back. The people felt that, no, other people who have been accused in the past, you, this is what has been done. It can't be different because this is your relation. So in the end, the council had to look at it, and JJ had to be the, the ultimate person to sign off, and he did sign off. Well, Professor, uh, that, that Lee was not JJ's relative. Mm. <laughs> Lee, Lee that was, was a friend. was said at the time. No, he was, he was, not, he was not his relative. He was, uh, he was just a friend. Mm. That Lee was the son of a dentist, an American dentist, mm. you know, who was in Ghana at that time. You know, that's what I know. Mm. I don't think that Lee was related to, uh, to, former, to, president. to, to former president. Mm. Maybe 
at least not directly in terms of a bloodline, you know. So, but it, I mean, he must have taken the bit of uh, doing for uh, for JJ <laughs> to approve his execution. I mean, really. So you you, you need those lacked that that yeah, he did, he that, did, he hard, did. that toughness. He couldn't. He didn't have that kind of thing. He's uh, you know he's quite religious and you know takes the attitude of uh, uh, a person who is compassionate and that sort of thing. It's not, it's not a bad idea, but to be a ruler, you need to be ruthless sometimes. Do you feel? Let, let, let me fling this hot potato at you. Do you feel you you, you could have been better as president than the former president Atta Mills? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. I mean, I certainly would have been different. <laughs> so it depends on what you, what your assessment of what is good is. <laughs> you know, if, if you're like a compassionate person who will kind of overlook all kinds of things. Like one of the reasons why he was quarrelling with uh, 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 President uh, Rawlings was because President Rawlings had wanted him to take action against some of the C uh, NPP elements yes. who are serving in government. And he wasn't prepared to do that, you know. Uh, so that was one of the, 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 the reasons. So, I mean, here you are. JJ wanted hard, I mean, uh, tough action. Mm -hmm. And Professor Mills was not prepared to do that. Maybe Professor Mills in this case was right, because he would have set up a precedent of always going after outgoing members of government. Mm -hmm. And uh, that probably wouldn't have been a very good precedent. But uh, basically, Mills was, you know, he uh, wasn't really the tough guy that you need for a presidential candidate. And also, of course, he was not well. I mean, that's just it. He was not well. We all knew that he wasn't well. Uh, it was quite obvious, I mean, on the platform when he was on the campaign, he could hardly speak. So, you know, so I don't know why anybody would want to push him to. Let, let, let's talk about someone that at least you agree was a tough, you know, person when it comes to leadership, Jerry John. Uh, Rawlings, through the eyes of Obed Asamoa, how would you describe Jerry John Rawlings? I think that uh, his toughness was necessary you know, to maintain some discipline in the society. And don't, don't forget, you've got to look at the state of uh, the economy and the state of the politics at the time he came in. At the time he came in, if you remember, there was, absolutely anything, there was absolutely nothing in the market. You couldn't buy anything. There was nothing at all. And you remember those were the days when everybody was uh, kind of had his eyes glued on essential commodities. They didn't exist. He's coming in and then having Professor Bochui uh, 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 um, as the finance minister and then having the structural adjustment program. That is what began to set the economy right. Instead of relying, as previously, on control prices. You know, when you, when you control prices uh, in an economy, everything goes, uh, goes wrong. You've got to allow prices to be controlled by market forces. You know? And I think what we are having now, the system we are having now, was made possible by JJ coming into the picture. And on, on the political front as well, you know, he also wanted probity and accountability. But apart from that, he wanted some discipline. Initially, his uh, revolution brought about some indiscipline because there were some soldiers that were indisciplined. They thought it was an occasion for them to uh, uh, wield power. And then, of course, the concept of the Kedes. You know, which was necessary because that is what really enabled his regime to be stable. Right. Because when you just have a military coup and you don't have a civilian organization to support it, 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 it tends to fail. You know, it's bringing in the Kedakor is what uh, enabled his re uh, regime to be, to be, to be uh, stable. Now, but of course, that also led to problems because the Kedakor. For example, we're interfering with management of uh, 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 industries, management of businesses, and that sort of thing. It led to considerable indiscipline, something which he had to deal with. So he had to deal with the indiscipline of soldiers, the indiscipline of, of the cadres. But in the end, he succeeded. And finally moved to a situation that we have now, where we have a stable uh, 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 civilian uh, government, constitutional government. I think that. You know, nobody, nobody can 
compare with him in terms of his achievements on, the, on these fronts. There are some who suggest that there was arm twisting, you know, the donor countries and all of that, that there had to be that, you know, turnover from military rule to civilian rule, and that is what uh, uh, former President Rawlings capitulated to. But would you like to react to that? No, I, I, don't, I don't think, of course, yes, there was a certain amount of, uh, you know, uh, pressure uh, for a return to constitutional rule, uh, which he couldn't uh, ignore. But um, I think that he was basically not interested in just remaining in power for the sake of being in power. You know, I mean, he could have, for example, refused to hand over to Kufu or one to Kufu or one. You, you know, think he could have? Well, others have. Even, even uh, or Donald Trump hasn't yet conceded to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I mean, he could have been difficult, but right. he, 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 he went it's along. Yes, I think that that I think was very good. How would you describe your relationship with former President Williams? It was good, quite frankly. Apart from the disagreements we had on political fronts, particularly relating to Professor Mills, uh, we had very good relations. I mean, really. So we, what, what was the disagreement with regard to Mills? Because I was, I thought that Professor Bochwe would have been a better candidate to, uh, uh, to, uh, to partner to, Rawlings. Yes, not to, not necessarily, but to take over from Rawlings after his uh, second term. Right. That is at the point at which Professor Mills came in, you know. But Professor Mills, of course, had been uh, his running mate for about uh, four years, you know. And so I think that, you know, he was used to working with him, but I think that he was probably also happy to work, to have him in power, mm -hmm. because he probably thought that Professor Mills could be malleable, malleable you know, <laughs> which of course he didn't turn out to be. Not to be the case. No, because the point is that Professor Mills also had his kin makers, had people behind him who were pushing him. And so they eventually, financed his campaign and he won. He who pays the piper calls the tune. After 2005-2006, when you left the NDC as far as chairmanship is concerned, you formed the DFP. Yes. Was there a fallout between you and former President Rawlings? Well, on that, again, it's all that arose from the, these Mills and Kosiboche affair, you know. Yeah, I mean, then there was a fallout. And the reason I left the party was what happened at Koforidwa, at the Congress. Right. It was clear at that Congress that I was in a harm's way, and some people were plotting, more or less, to, uh, uh, you know, in fact, the rumor was that they were planning to pour acid on me at the end of the Congress. Mm. So at the, in the middle of the Congress, at some stage, the security elements came and told me that they would take me out of the Congress hall. Otherwise, if we were to stay there <coughs> until the end of the Congress, uh, I would be harmed. You know. So, at that stage, of, at that time, of course, you know, uh, JJ was on the other side. I mean, it was <laughs> with those who were against me. I don't know what role he would have played in this kind of uh, devilish plan. I don't think that he, he was involved in that one. I think it was done on the, uh, you know, by those who believed in that sort of thing. Uh, but, you know, those who did what they did to me in Kuforidwa were the very ones who also manipulated the Sunyani Congress against Jerry's wife. Really? Of course. You feel that Congress was manipulated? Of course. I was. mean, she lost by a landslide. Yes, but the point is, is the, way, the way that the, she was treated she and JJ were humiliated. They didn't have to be humiliated. You know, JJ and the wife were brought into the hall, for example, at the time they were saying prayers. To avoid people making JJ, JJ, you know how the, you know, his name always are kind of aroused, enthusiasm and that sort of thing. You know, it was, it was manipulated. You know, I'm not saying that uh, Mills wouldn't have won. But I think that it, it could, could have been done in a way as not to have humiliated them that way. And then since then, 
so many uh, statements and things that we condemned him. You see, in the end, the JJ was had become more or less uh, dissatisfied with the with the NDC, and had moved. There was now a distance between him and, and the NDC, and it has reflected in the developments that we have been seeing. For example, with regard to the barrier of his uh, of his mother. Mm. The NDC didn't feature much, you know, when they had a state uh, uh, ceremony. The NDC didn't feature much. In fact, even President uh, 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 John Mahama didn't come to the State House. He went to Jolukofe. Wouldn't it be because of some of the scathing attacks, rampant attacks of the former president on the party he founded? Well, I don't know why he didn't come. I think that he should have come there. That was a state occasion. Uh, he should have come there. And in the end, he went to Jolly Coffee uh, with a whole crowd of people and looked like they were, like, uh, they were having a, a rally. You know, that, that I, don't, I don't think was, was good. And you see what is happening now. Right. You see what's happening now. When they wanted to sign their book of condolence, they were told to go to the International Conference Center, to NDC, that's the NDC leadership. And they went there, and when they went there, the room was locked. And they said the uh, book had been taken away. And then they were asked to come back on Monday. So they decided to go and open their own book of condolence at the party headquarters. Now that's, that's, that shows uh, some <laughs> a very unpleasant relationships between the party and the Rawlings family. So some have suggested that it is not uh, the party, maybe it is the other side, maybe the MPP. No, no, the MPP could not have uh, done that. I think the MPP would be reflecting the wishes of the, of the family. Right. On the back of the demise of our former president, there have been a lot of goodwill messages, nice things, tributes, flowery tributes, if, if I may add. But it can't be. There's no one who is all good. So from where you sit, what was the good, the bad, and the ugly of Jerry John Rawlings? Well, <clears throat> I think the ugly was the indiscipline that <laughs> was generated by his revolution. And the fact that several people, I mean, lost their lives uh, in the process. And uh, over the years, you know, you had, like, for example, you remember the execution of these uh, former heads of state, that sort of thing. You know, that, I think, was unfortunate. You're referring to the generals? Yes, yeah, the generals, you know. That, that was unfortunate. That was you unfortunate. Know. Uh -huh. But do you feel the, uh, the former president necessarily sanctioned that? No, I believe that it was probably under pressure from the other ranks, you know. I, I, that, that's what I think happened. But I, I can't prove it. You know. What would you remember him for the most? What is that one thing or few things you would remember the most when you think of former President Rawlings? I think his, uh, his honesty and his honest belief in the good of the country. You know, um, I, I believe that uh, he had very good intentions. He was selfless, you know, it's not like where you get, you get politicians leave office and they are very wealthy. He, he never acquired any wealth. You know, in many ways, he was like a groomer or a person like Castro, you know, which was a very good thing. I mean, you, you don't often find leaders of that nature. So that was good. And, and I must say that on the personal level, if you get, to, if you get close to him, he's very pleasant. He was very pleasant. You know, I mean, you could make jokes, you could make crack jokes, you could laugh, and you know, I mean, I remember, for example, the hadn't been to his office for over 20 years until recently, when the Council of uh, Elders was considering how to constitute a new executive. And uh, you know, previously, what we used to do was to make sure that we had candidates from all the regions so that the executive looked balanced, you know, which you don't have now, because we couldn't do that. And actually, at that stage, at one stage, JJ himself was suggesting that we should go back to the old system, 
so that things will look balanced. So the Council of Elders appointed a committee of which I was made the, uh, the head. But before we started uh, performing, he had issued some statements somewhere, which was, you know, his usual boom things. Mm -hmm. So I was a little offended. I said, well, look, I'm not, I don't want to operate under this kind of circumstance. So the Council of Elders said, look, you go and discuss the issues with him. You see, now when I went to his office, for the first time for about 20 years, you know how he introduced me? He introduced me to some gentleman, they said, Obeda Samoa is a dictator. So I really? Said, yes. Former President Rawlings referred to you as a dictator. Yeah. So I said, between you and I, who, who was more of a dictator? He burst out laughing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it, it, was, it was a joyous occasion in the end. You oh, know. Wow. That's, that's the sort of person he was. He, he said it out of, you know, I mean, we just making a joke. You know, he knew that he was more of a dictator than myself. But, uh, you know. Did you he, actually think he was a dictator? Well, I mean, to some extent, if you're ready to be a, le a leader, you would have sometimes just to put your foot down on certain things. You know, I think to, to some extent it was. You, you've also said, I mean, very currently, that you feel he will go down in history as one of the greatest presidents oh, yes. in, in Ghana. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, yes. Do you think maybe apart from Nkrumah, he's the best we've ever had? I, 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 th I think so. In terms, of the trans in terms of the transformations, mm. I think he, he, he is, yes, he would go down as the best we've had so far. Mm. I mean, apart from Nkrumah. Nkrumah certainly was uh, a towering uh, you know, uh, uh, personality. But after him, I think Gigi's uh, transformation of the society was uh, you know, you know, uh, quite uh, uh, impressive. So many people have said so many things about the man JJ as a military ruler, as a democratic ruler. Do you feel at some point we've been too harsh when it comes to, you know, the sort of rhetoric out there with regards to the former president? I think so. I think some of the rhetoric, particularly from some of the NDC persons who, were, who felt that he was kind of moving away from the party and thought that he was being more sympathetic to the, uh, to the MPP. You know, some of them were, really have been very unkind in their comments, you know. In your book, The Political History of uh, Ghana, The Experiences of a Nonconformist, you also talk about how Rawlings himself expressed his misgivings about party uh, politics at a point in time, especially starting from the 92 era. I mean, this was something that even the constitutional you know, team had also raised concerns about because of the winner-take-all uh, you know, system. But it appears that has only become entrenched uh, as the years have gone by. How do we get out of that? Because some people have said that the reason our politics is so vile, is so bitter, is because of the winner-take-all you know, take all system. And, and that is what we still have. That's also, that's to some extent is true, but I think the worst part of it is the monetization. And that is what JJ was very much against. But you see, he did not allow, when I was the chairman of the party, one of the things I wanted to do was to see that the party established a fund which would support the presidential candidate of the party at any given time, so that then we will make a choice not on the basis of the candidate having money, but on the basis of the candidate being a good candidate for the country. But we didn't, we didn't do that, you know, they didn't give me a chance. You know, <laughs> he and others were criticizing me all the time, blah, blah, this is, we didn't have the opportunity to do that. We still have that system now. So a person who gets the leadership of the party usually get, gets it because the, the feeling is that he can fund the, the campaign. That, that shouldn't be so. That shouldn't be so. As we wrap up, Doc, we're live, uh, you know, we, as we, you know, share our thoughts, Giorgio, I would like you to speak to the rest of Ghanaians. What would be your tribute with regard to former President Jerry John Rawlings, uh, now the late uh, former president? What would be your tribute to the man under whom you served? I attribute uh, more or less has been implicit in the things I've been saying, that he brought fundamental changes to the society, uh, you know, and that people should 
look at the good with the bad. I mean, they, they, they should have a balanced judgment about him. And that a balanced judgment really will be favorable. And it won't be the kind of judgment that some people are making now. Uh, I think we should be fair to him. That's what, that's what I would say. Otto Bedasamwa, thank you so much for actually engaging us, for hosting us. You've been a wonderful host. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. You. And this has been our interaction with uh, the longest serving foreign minister, longest serving attorney general in our republic uh, right here in uh, Ghana, also the chairman of the NDC between 2002 and 2005, Dr. Obed Asamoah. Thank you for your company.